Now I want to start uh, the show tonight. Uh, the first uh, segment is O-Scale Modeling. David Schultz is the uh, host for it. And O-Scale Central is the sponsor. <laughs> I'm David Vaughn of O-Scale Central. O-Scale 2-Rail, models built to 1 to 48 scale and running on 2-Rail track, is the best kept secret in model railroading. We're pleased to team with Jim Kello to introduce O-Scale 2-Rail to new tracks viewers. O-Scale 2-Rail is for modelers. At twice the scale and eight times the mass of HO, O-Scale's half the knees of modeling create an outstanding model railroading experience. O-Scale 2-Rail modeling is as varied as railroading itself. Modern era, transition, or old time, standard gauge, or narrow. A wide variety of models is available at affordable prices. There is a supportive community and lots of shows, clubs, and events. You can explore O-Scale 2-Rail by going to our website, oscalecentral.com. You will find information about the scale and how to get started, as well as a free, searchable, scale-wide product and service guide and listings of coming O-Scale events. You will also find information about how to join O-Scale Central. We promote O-Scale 2-Rail and support modelers in the scale. When your eyes are going bifocular, when you need fresh challenges, keep O-Scale 2-Rail in mind. Check us out, oscalecentral.com. Thanks. And David Schultz is the host for this segment. Good evening, everyone. Jim, how are you? I'm great. Well, that's good. It's been a couple of months hiatus for me. I was uh, working at the museum all summer. They were a little shorthanded on the railroad, so I had to step in. And So I've been gone for the last couple of months. Sorry about that. But anyway, tonight we will, the latest thing in O-Scale was the uh, Katie announced their two-rail O-Scale truck. And it comes in Proto 48 also. So you can either do five foot or four foot, eight and a half. Um, kind of a clever design. Little, the bolster is split right down the middle. And it, it isn't sprung, but it does equalize. And then the brakes, and I know this can be hard to see, but the brakes that are on here, there's a little clip that holds the two halves of the uh, bolster together. And uh, these things track really well. But anyway, I can get my photos set up here all right come on all right here we go i'm not like a lot of these guys i'm i'm a little behind the times on technology but anyway <laughs> And this is not a paid advertisement for Katie, but I thought this was pretty exciting to have a, a new truck available. Since the brass imports are really struggling right now with Korea not playing nice anymore and prices have just skyrocketed on those. I think a, a typical pair of freight trucks now are around the $60, $70 markets. It's kind of incredible. These here, uh, these are five different styles that they've come up with. They've got your 50 ton, they've got your 70 ton, they got the arch bar. And then they got two of the modern 100-ton roller bearing. So great, great selection. And I've seen these on eBay for about 35 And I know some hobby shops uh, have them for even a little less. So the $40 price tag they're showing here, I think, is uh, what they may have had for a suggestion. But you can get a little bit better price. Uh, I've even, even seen them on eBay at this point for around $34 a pair. But uh, anyway, this is the way they come. This is the... Uh, what they call the Bentendorf 50 ton. And this was Proto 48 naturally. That's what I'm into. And uh, you can buy this. This is something they sell separately, but this is a bolster adapter. This will make Weaver, Lionel, trying to remember, especially the Lionel. This, this is the bolster that will adapt to the Lionel. And, and this really clever. It takes literally less than five minutes to put a pair of KB trucks on any Lionel, Weaver, MTH, Atlas, any of the cars. It's uh uh, like the Lionel, I, and I don't think they've got kind of a hole where the truck attached and they've got a piece that fits on either side to screw it together and, uh, and then screw the truck to it. It's, it's rather clever how they did it. Um, 
here's an Atlas car. This is the original trucks that came with it. And uh, so here's the pair of trucks we're going to put on it, the 100 ton roller bearing trucks. And these are the adapter. These are the pieces that go over the bolster that's on the car. And you get a sprue of these. So there's many different sizes fit on many different cars. This one happens to be for the Atlas. You can see here, this is where it slips over the, the bolster or the, the pin that was where the truck originally mounted to. Oh, I got my photos out of order. This is another Atlas car with the Atlas truck. Kind of the same deal here. Oh, my pictures are all out of order here. Anyway, here's one of the cars that was converted. Uh, they make a bolster for for even the this and Atlas uh, um, trailer train type thing. Piggyback flat. Oh, boy. Now my pictures are really out of whack here. I don't know what that's doing there. All right. Well, anyway, the trucks screw on there. I'm missing some photos. The trucks screw on there. Uh, really a neat conversion. Uh, real simple. And uh, I think they're going to do well with this. I know the, the price tag seems a little high at 35, but when you're, you're considering that uh, about the only other truck available is I think Atherin is still making the Bentendorf truck. And uh, they're about $10 a pair. They're made out of Delrin where the KDs are all metal, double insulated wheels. And uh, there's no brake detail. Uh, still a decent truck. I, I like to buy them whenever I'm at shows and such, but uh Anyway, these, these are a nice alternative. And I, I've heard from a few people that they track incredibly well. So anyway, I was going to do this bit here. I was at a steam show this weekend, and I thought this was just funnier than all get out. Didn't have much to do with railroading other than here's an A and B unit on a tractor. And I'd never seen anything quite like that. And then mm -hmm. introducing the BAB unit which I'd never, they took three farm tractors and hooked them together into a, and this was a combined total of 200 horse. And I just thought it was hilarious that somebody actually went through the trouble to take three farm tractors and make B units and A units out of them. So anyway, kind of a short program tonight, but uh, uh, it's what I've got as far as the, uh, the uh, oh, Atherin trucks are 1495 according to Martin. So, so they're about double the price, but you're getting, you're getting brake shoes, you're getting metal, all around metal, a very nice truck. So that's about what I have for tonight, Jim. What are the wheels? Are the wheels metal or plastic? Nope, the wheels are metal on these. They're the same metal that they use on their couplers. I'm not okay. sure, it's it's uh, kind of a, you know, like the old Zamek, except Katie apparently has got a process because I've never heard of their couplers or any of their metal products ever falling apart. So. They've corrected whatever the problem was with that zinc rot that would appear on a lot of the Zamic models. Uh, Katie is also talking about, so if anybody calls Katie and orders these directly from them, you can put a bug in their ear about possibly um, possibly asking for the shelf coupler. There's talks that Katie's thinking about building a shelf coupler in O-scale. So anybody that calls Katie, put a bug in their ear just to show them. Now, I know that these sold out when they first came out. And they've been producing these, uh, they're, they're back in stock again. But I was pleased to hear that they sold out e instantly when they when they produced them. I, I bought a pair and uh, I'm, I'm most pleased with them, but I don't have much of a running layout, but I do go over to my son James and watch him run his stuff around him. And these things track incredibly well. David, from my understanding is we can pretty much forget the, uh, the brass trucks. That's kind of what uh, was mentioned at Chicago. We had a couple of producers there, and uh, I won't give out the names, but anyway, they were kind of tale, telling a tale of woe that uh, the, the few builders that are left willing to work with Americans on building model railroad stuff have, have doubled their prices. And so I know uh, one, the passenger car truck, I think for him to, to make any money at all, he's got to sell the passenger car trucks for like $160, $170 a pair. And he just figures there aren't a lot of people in the scale that are willing to shell out that kind of money for a brass truck. But uh, these so kind of give hope. So what's the alternative? Well, you know, that that's it. White metal. You know, you can still buy the old K-Line. Scale City now owns that. Uh, they make a 41N truck, but they're white metal, which tends to be a little soft. Some people yeah. won't use them. I, I will use them on certain cars, but you got to be careful with them. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, there's not a lot of alternatives. 3D printing, of course, is the next big thing. Uh, I do know of a guy who's making uh, caboose trucks, and yeah. he 3D prints in a in a wax based resin, and then they burn out the resin, and uh, well, they actually just pour the brass right in on top of it. And he's selling his trucks for around fifty dollars a pair for these caboose trucks. So there is some alternatives if you know somebody can do 3D printing. They, you know, the the trouble with a lot of these 3D printers are. They're willing to do a few pair, but not get into a big run on these things. So, David, it seems to me if, if brass is going to be that expensive, it's probably not going to be around a whole lot longer. It, it would seem to me that this might be a role for this uh, O scale central organization to get involved in, to uh, to maybe give uh, uh, the manufacturers some help trying to figure out, you know, what modelers would want what. I mean, because it this is really going to be a, a serious problem for O-Scale, it seems to me. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be tough. And a lot of the older trucks uh, weren't, you know, uh, there are a lot of trucks out there. They're 1764 ths which people aren't happy with. Uh, some people refuse to have anything plastic on their railroad, which, okay, whatever, you know, to each his own. Um, I, I personally didn't care. The Athern Delrin trucks always ran really nice. Yeah, they're lacking in a few details, but if you want to, you can have, you know, add those details to them with a little bit of effort, so it's not too bad. But, but yeah, you know, you're right. Uh, O-Scale Central could get involved in maybe helping, you know, uh, direct some of these people to produce a truck that's somewhat reasonable and yet allows us to, uh, to, to build the cars we want to build, you know, especially for a scratch builder like myself, buying passenger car trucks. You know, luckily, there's a lot of the old Camtron trucks out there, uh, passenger-wise, but they're not necessarily, you know, 100% accurate. Wasatch, of course, made some of those beautiful trucks I've ever seen passenger, and yeah. I thought it was a little crazy at $100 a pair, and now they're talking 165 which that's way out of my league. Yeah. You might want to mention it to, uh, to other people on the board of OSC, <laughs> because it does seem to me that this is the kind of thing you know, an organization like OSC could really could really be a benefit to the O scale hobbyist. I will do so in the next board meeting, which is around the middle of this month. So, so Jim, will, Jim, Jim and da Jim and David, just to be fair, uh, David Vaughn, um, this is actually David Vaughn's company, and he has three different. He's actually been working on these. These are three D printed, um, three different kinds of trucks on his website. Oh, so man. this is this is wit and wisdom models. Oh, okay. And he's yeah. actually got three different truck sets, and there are 108, I think, for a three pair three of pair. pack, which I guess is six trucks. Yeah. So, anyway, just FYI. Yep, that's nice. Very that's nice. Great. That's great. Maybe he'll take care and solve David. the problem. David, it's Pat here. Yeah. I bought a whole set for six heavyweight cars and aluminum extruded. From MTH two rail, about three years ago, and they're beautiful trucks. They're all steel wheels, and oh, yeah. they're hooked up for for uh, lighting too. Oh, okay, yep. You know, I never considered that. Uh, uh, I'm, you know, I haven't seen. I don't. I don't buy a lot of MTH or uh, or Atlas stuff. You know, I, I do most of my own building and such. So I haven't really seen many of the trucks and stuff. I wasn't sure what they. I know Atlas had. Uh, was it Atlas that came out with some of those uh, Burlington and California Zephyr cars? And uh, I see that they were selling the trucks separately. And it it uh, they they appeared to be fairly decent looking. These so are all that's steel. Interesting. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's nice. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate it. And and Phil, thank you for the information about David Vaughn. Uh, that's uh, that's really helpful. So yeah, you think I'd have been on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, David. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Jim. We'll see you later. Yes, sir.